Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Wednesday Night of Talk Nerdy to Me. As I speak right at this very millisecond, there's not a single person watching this show. So there we go. <laughs> Two people have just joined us. So I was a bit worried there for a while. Holy guacamole. They thought, oh, what a way to waste a Wednesday night by joining it with us. So anyway, g'day guys. Colin Parkinson. G'day Colin. How you going, old son? All the numbers are streaming up to number four. How good is that? <laughs> anyway, before I get too excited, I've got to introduce my fellow lads. I have MPS and Jeffro. How are we, boys? Good. Oh, good evening, all. Welcome, nerds. So we're just going to have a bit of a random chat about various things uh, tonight. And the first thing we're going to discuss, um, like the good thing about these conversations, there's no right and there's no wrong. It's all just thoughts and opinions. And uh, we're going to discuss about sci-fi. It doesn't have to be sci-fi specifically, but we'll stick with that, I guess. Uh, collectibles, whether they are a worthy investment. And you can in interpret investment any way you like. Blade Runner. I don't know who that person was, but they got it right. So, uh, yes, it was actually from Blade Runner. Two, two, four. And noodles. All right. So there you go. So <laughs> I wish, but That might have been the vial, actually. So if it's me, you, Mr. Vile, writing that comment, we can't see your name. So you're going to put your name in after the comments. So there you go. All right. So. Sci-fi collectibles, are they a worthy investment? I'm going to pass this over to, uh, of the two of my compatriots, uh, I'm going to stick with the guy who's been collecting longer than anybody uh, just to kick things off, and then I'll go to NPS. So, Jeffro, uh, what do you think, dude? Are they a worthy investment or not? I mean, it's very much like the, uh, the stock market because, um, I mean, I've been collecting since the 80s, and, um, I mean, from point blank, you know, I've always collected stuff that I've loved, so... I've never actually thought about it in terms of uh, uh, investments, but it's been interesting to see the uh, the kind of trends that have been happening over the years. So back in the, uh, the 80s and early 90s, the big thing that everyone considered as uh, an investment was actually uh, Japanese tin toys. So uh, there was some full-on um, people that used to collect those, and uh, they can really commanded some serious dollars now it's interesting if you go back and sort of look at uh maybe what you might have paid for something in the uh, the 80s and 90s and where uh your tin toys trying to get that money now you you won't see it because i mean a lot of the collectors that uh did collect have either uh passed away and they're not collecting anymore and all the younger ones of course are, are collecting different things but that was just one of those things that Back in the day, um, they were the, uh, the top dollar. And the other thing too, and Dags, you probably would know this as much as NPS there, uh, was movie posters and, um, and and lobby cards and such. So it was it was a huge thing, you know, and there were some really great um, posters and there was a heck of a lot of collectors and, and, and trading all that. Now... Um, they're not they're really that much to go by these days. I mean, you can go on uh, eBay, but you'll rarely see, you know, sort of uh, uh, the prices that maybe they were, you know, fetching in the 80s and 90s and even sort of early 2000s. So, uh, and if people want those prices, well, people are not paying them. So there are some really rare posters. You'll often see some of the UK auction houses where they'll do things like, Quad posters and 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 you know particularly like Star Wars, Bond, Superman, the movies from the seventies and eighties can fetch some really good prices. But on the whole, the poster market has um, has, has died somewhat. So that's sort of uh, something. If you invested in posters back then and you want to sell them now, your return on investment isn't really going to net you all that much. So that's sort of my perspective from the uh, uh, the, the early days. And, um, yeah, if anyone else wants to throw any sort of comments in. Well, you got one from Michael Herbert. He asked you, when did you, what did you start your collection with? I, I mean, I started my collection pretty modestly because I had, you know, basically sort of uh, income from doing um, uh, paper selling and, and working in a milk bar. So for me, it was whatever I could get. So that would be things like collecting from op shops. So quite a lot of my early toys and, and um, things like that were actually from op shops. 
And because I was a, a big sort of movie and TV fan in general, I had a real wide interest. So it wouldn't just be um, uh, one thing, it would be everything. So I would collect annuals, I'd collect books, I would collect toys, I would collect records, I'd collect trading cards. So uh, uh, trading cards was a, a big one for me because when I was a kid in primary school, uh, you'd collect the football cards, uh, the Star Wars cards came along and then all the other ones came around that time like Kung Fu and, and what have you. So that, if anything, maybe trading cards was my earliest um, earliest collecting. Um, what do you reckon, MPS? Investments, uh, collectibles as an investment, whether it's a big deal or whether it works for you or not? Oh, look, I, I think if you have the right piece, then, yeah, you can make an investment. But uh, over the years, something like the the 66 Batmobile that was in the TV show, that's gone up and down in price. You know, at one point they auctioned it off or sorry, George Barris bought it back for a dollar, you know, after years earlier it was sold for three million at auction. So, you know, even something as iconic as that, which is what now, 60 something years old nearly, uh, or 56 plus years, um, still has its up and down. I think the last auction it went for two million us i think for memory which was a couple of years ago so um something like that which is a big ticket item you would you would think that has you know would just go up and up and up and up but just obviously isn't so i think jeff Rose right collecting is like the stock market it's going to go up and down depending on on what's going on and and who's got what um but i think jeff Rose's point of if you're dead then you stop collecting is also quite true so mm -hmm. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, yeah, that's a fair point as well. Um, in terms of of anything current, I would suggest that potentially uh, artwork would be the most valuable type thing, or even autographs. You know, Stan Lee's autograph on a on a, an original picture may be the thing to get. You know, it might have the dollars if it costs next to nothing to get, sort of thing. So. Um, it's hard to sort of say. With the movie posters, if you got those for nothing, like any collectible, I guess, if you got it for nothing and you turn it over for a profit, then it's a profit, regardless of what it is. But if you paid, I don't know, $500 for a original, I don't know, Superman poster and you sold it for 700 it's a turnover, but it's not really a turnover in terms of it's not a lot of profit, um, if that makes sense. So... If you buy a pussy cat and you sell that, <laughs> <pussycat, laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but it all depends on what it is, you know, because there's there's collecting for profit, there's collecting for passion, and there's collecting for um, not OCD, but in that sort of realm where you you start collecting something and you just can't help it, but it's not for profit and it's not for a passion. You just sort of collect it until you can't collect anymore. Yeah, it's interesting. Colin's put through a couple of good comments about if collecting is your passion, then that will bring the most joy. And a lot of people do it not for as an investment, but purely because they enjoy doing it. And um, uh, and you are right, Colin. There, right? There's a lot of trends that go with collecting. You know, something's popular today, then it's unpopular tomorrow, and whatever else. And I just like he's here, kitty, kitty. I can just imagine here, kitty, kitty. <laughs> so uh, there you go. And Michelle's just joined us all. So there you go. You've got the shared post there. But yeah, you hear Michelle? That's the most important thing. Um, there would be people out there who do purchase things uh, for the sake of uh, reselling them again at a later date. And I guess knowing how the market works and it's such a hit and miss operation. I mean, Jeff, uh, sorry, yeah, Jeff and I would remember we got people that we know who invested in certain toys and things from 30 years ago with the sole idea of it's like, well, we'll buy them, put them away. And 30 years from now, they've got to be worth a fortune. And of course, they just completely backfired and they're just worth less. Uh, some things like we're talking about movie posters, typically, the rarer and the most unusual will command the most dollars, but of course they're rare for a reason. So if you're talking about comics, for example, like your number one Superman, number one Batman, whatever else, sure, they're going to be worth squillions, but I mean, who's got those? And that's the reason why they're worth a lot. So I think anybody who was to start today and say, okay, I'm going to start collecting tomorrow, buying stuff as an investment, I think they're going to be, regardless of what they pick up, um, they're going to be struggling. So there you go. Well, in terms of what you one of you guys okay. goes through. I was going to say, in terms of if you're going to start a collection tomorrow, Lego is the way to go. All these sets that are coming out that have limited runs, six months after their run, they're 
double, triple the price. So you can make your money that way. A year or two or 10 years later, not so much, but you can actually turn your money over quite quick on a large Lego set that not too many people have access to because they retire them quite quickly nowadays. Okay. Jeffro? Yeah. I can give you some examples of things where there was uh, people collecting and then it all went horribly wrong. So I think we've probably got an audience that would probably remember the Beanie Babies. So is that sort of giving people shivers? Do they remember the Beanie Babies? So absolutely huge in the, uh, the last half of the 90s. I know my wife uh, had a, a pen friend and, and sort of she would send them across and, and it's like she inadvertently started collecting a few of them. But it was so huge that at the height of its popularity, people were flipping these things on uh, eBay for 10 times the original price because the company's strategy is what they did. And it's very much like pop vinyls that they're doing now is that they would promote deliberate scarcity. They do different designs, again, in limited quantity. Uh, they selectively marketed things in certain stores. Yep. We've lost him. Am I still? Yep. Cool. He's and right. um, as yeah, a result yeah. of this, and he said, this is very much like one uh, second market. And this is, and this is where eBay. Yeah. Right in mid sentence, really, you just got. Really saw the brand of the collecting. Uh, uh, and. All right, Jeffrey, we're going to have to just cut you off there, old son. You're in mid-sentence and uh, you've just frozen up on us. So um, I'll just read a couple of comments that uh, have been posted through. And I agree with Colin. There's a lot of stuff that's been produced now in, like, mass amounts. And any decides to... Sorry, Jeff, I'm going to drop you off. So you're, you're going to have to stop something. So there we go. All right, we'll get him to rejoin. Um, so um, where are we? So yes, if you do buy stuff and it just happens to increase in value later on, then you're actually, that's that's good for you because you know, a lot of people try to do it intentionally and it doesn't always work as Jeffrey mentioned. And the whole Beanie Baby saga uh, was a good example of that. And uh, now we've sort of lost him. So uh, Jeff, yeah, Jeffrey, if you can hear us, you may have to try and reconnect again in a moment there, sir. So, um, and that's the same as Tarzos. Remember when Tarzos come out? You were yeah. spending money on Tarzos. People were, you know, doing shifty deals, you know, buying all these things. And now they're just useless bits of cardboard because yeah. they have no real function. So, yeah, yeah another yeah. one of those ones that sort of went down the side. Uh, I just want to jump in and say to Michael, uh, no, I'm not really a hoarder. There has been one thing I've been collecting lately, and I do have a few of them, but that's not really hoarding. That's just been an obsession, an OCD thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You're a hoarder um, if you're a collector anyway, so what can I say? Yeah. It is it is a known fact that um, Star Wars could have revolutionised the whole collecting thing, not just because they produced a lot of merchandise, but the fact that it became so valuable uh, very soon after the fact, uh, all those years later. And Colin is right. Everything from before they, the 70s and the 60s and whatever else usually holds its value quite well, especially if it's in excellent condition, because they just didn't produce these things in the same quantity that they did later on in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. And uh, it's almost like there's a divide in the world where you go pre-77, things were just like produced for kids and they were you know, just like used and discarded. And then after 77, everything suddenly was, oh, hang on to it because it's worth money. And of course, from then on into the 90s, I remember vividly that with Star Trek, the next generation, people they released new action figures and everybody was hoarding them thinking, oh, this is going to be worth a million bucks in 100 years. And you're thinking, but everybody's doing the same thing. It only works if one or two people do it. If 50 people do it, it doesn't work because the market's saturated. So there you go. Um, Jeffro, so we lost you there. You broke down halfway through, so we missed most of what you said. So uh, I do apologise that. Although Colin has just said it was a good point, Jeffro. That's a very sarcastic comment from Colin. Good point, Jeffro. When he was frozen, he couldn't actually say anything. So there you go. Is there anything you want to finish up on, Jeffro, before we move on? No. Yeah. No, he's not working for us. He's not having a good day. So what does it say there? Good point, Jeff. I was a sending here and they collect all vinyl pops. Oh, yeah, yeah, vinyl pops. So that's the next, that's the current Beanie Baby phenomenon, isn't it? Like the whole vinyl pop, pop vinyl thing. So uh, what do you reckon? And some, yep. And some of those are worth quite a bit. You know, there's there's the one, there's one that's a gold one apparently that's so rare that it's the only one that's worth thousands and it's been, you know, 
here and there sort of thing. Um, in terms of uh, some of the Star Wars bobblehead pop vinyls, they're worth three, four times what you bought them for. Uh, so it all depends, and they can go for up and down like the stock market, essentially, like everything else. Yeah, someone's written about the comment about, uh, you know, click them all and limited numbers and all this sort of stuff. And, of course, then you've got variants of things and, you know, clearly some uh, manufacturing companies deliberately make changes to things to make certain things rarer or not rarer. And to the collectors, they may be classed as collectibles, but whether their value increases, that's a completely different uh, situation altogether. And there are some collectibles that, regardless how old they are, uh, like so I mentioned, the Phantom Menace action figures. You're right, they are worthless and always will be worthless. So anybody who bought all that stuff thinking, oh, yeah, one day I'll be able to mm. sell it and make an absolute fortune, you just wasted your own time. So, uh, yes, there's a, a, click, a clicking fail if ever there was one. And the worst part is you could have the entire set of everything and it doesn't impress a single person because like, it just didn't work. There's just so much stuff produced for it that uh, people just think of it uh, in a really um, uh, negative light. So, Jeffro, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm back. Actually, it's funny you should say that, uh, collect them all, because that's actually the uh, uh, exact phrase that the Transformers merchandising people use to be able to encourage people to buy their merch. So that was very much their uh, their thing. So, um, yeah, with the, uh, the Beanie Babies, what happened was that um, uh, there was a, a mass sell-off in, uh, in 1999. So... It was a bit like the stock market crash. What happened was that some people started selling off their Beanie Babies and people thought, oh, heck, uh, maybe these things are not going to be worth as much. And other people started selling them off. And next thing you know, as it, uh, eBay was flooded and nobody suddenly became interested in Beanie Babies anymore. So I really think that was more a case of uh, investment more than love. So an interesting story is that um, a West Virginia man was murdered. Um, by a co-worker because he owed him money for a beanie baby. Mm. How cruel is that? So that's yeah. actually a true story. And um, at one stage, uh, they did a uh, survey and apparently more than 60% of American households in the late 90s actually owned a beanie baby. Wow. So yeah, that was the kind of um, market uh, penetration that they managed to sort of get people to, uh, to buy these things. And uh, Believe it or not, they're still around, uh, much smaller numbers, but, uh, yeah, they still exist, technically speaking. So the people who won out of all that in the end were the company who manufactured these things in the first place, made their squillions of dollars by selling so much product, and after it was all gone and the, the whole thing had died in the ass, they didn't care. They go, you know what, we've achieved the ultimate goal. So uh, then you produce another product and just rep uh, replicate the entire thing. That's that's true, and as I said, it's... Um, something that pop vinyls are now doing and i sort of had a look at that and i mean i collect pop vinyls and just to give you a bit of an idea sort of uh, the way um pop vinyl do their things they have variations such as a flopped version so that's the fuzzy sort of uh, versions they do super sized ones of the same things they turn them into black and white rather than sort of in color uh there's even a few that were centered uh, there's some that are glow in the dark. Uh, they do uh, what they call chase ones, which they pack uh, one in every six uh, boxes a chase one, which is slightly different from all the regular ones. Uh, they do exclusives, and that's a big thing uh, that with collectors, like you'll find uh, uh, it's only available at Walmart, or it's only available at their store, or... Uh, uh, you know sort of uh, certain conventions and such and um and and there is what they call the vaulted um pops so they're the ones that basically they've said well we no longer make them yeah Sorry, Jeff Rowe, we've lost you again, old son. I'm going to have to boot you off. So, um, all right, so I like what Ange said. Uh, yeah, anything that says collectible or limited is not a collectible, and I totally agree with that. And I used to love that thing on the back of boxes saying collect them all. It's like saying, oh, no, one isn't enough. You must have everything. And it's just like, really? So you've got no choice in the matter. You've got to do it. Uh, I think that's what's funny. And what Susie said is correct. Parents 
will pay a lot of money for plastic. And a lot of people have done that, you know, and uh, it's it's just the mentality of a collector depending on what it is that you're into. And you might say, oh, look, I can get a pair of shoes for 30 bucks, but this collectible's 50 bucks. I'll take the collectible any day of the week because it's uh, I've got to have it. So uh, there you go. Uh, yes, Michael, you could be right. So is Josh stealing on your bandwidth, Jeffro? No, he, he may well be, but... Um... I didn't actually look because I thought, well, I better not um, disappear in case you get a black screen. So I thought, well, I'll stick where I am. No, no. If you, am it's, I it's gone? Like you're, break, you're breaking up through half your conversations. So I have to keep kicking you out. So uh, there you go. So uh, oh, okay. This at my end, I look quite, at my end, I look quite good. So it's not breaking up. So mm. yeah, there you go. Very good. NPS, what do you reckon, man? Regional, regional internet. Yep. Right. Look, it's it's hard. I I. Saying it's collectible is one thing, saying it's limited, and sometimes limited is fine if it's a numbered product, but if it's one of 200 million, then yeah, it's not really limited. If it's one of 20 or 30 or 50 around the world, then yes, that is quite limited depending on what it is. Um, as for what Jeffro was saying about the pops, the variations on, like I've got some of the Batman ones, I think I've got probably 10 actual Batman figures, and three of them are probably the same thing with just a different paint job you know and you go well what's the point but you know because there's various costumes and all that sort of stuff in the batman universe then you can sort of justify that but if you're looking at uh what did they release last week in terms of pops they released a, a handful of of gay pride uh colorful ones which were the, the the colorful rainbow sort of look and one of them was a batman figure and it, i think it looks weird because it's not it's just, it's like a, a piece of artwork rather than uh, what it's meant to be, just a, a, a visual sort of mini statue type thing. So in that sort of terms, yes, it works. But in terms of why you would collect it um, as a as a as a figure, I don't know. Not when you've got the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. So um, but yeah. I think um, as a general rule, if you generally, if you buy something that costs a lot of money in the first place, there's a good chance that in time it will increase in value um, as a rule of thumb, as opposed to saying, I bought this item, it's only worth 50 cents. Oh, you know, it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark, I buried it in the sand for a thousand years, but it's priceless. It doesn't always work that way. You make up a little bit, but not like squillions of dollars. And like someone's mentioned um, about, uh, Michelle mentioned about Beanie Babies, the first six or a hundred bucks. I'd assume that's a expensive price or a cheap price i'm not entirely sure so um yeah and you're right uh there's another comment there about supermarket collectibles so yeah people are sort of tucking into all sorts of things i mean uh like when they did the supermarket recently the little, the little tiny supermarket what do you call it the products i know jeffro's uh, wife lavinia bought a lot of these things and people just went nuts over this stuff uh, and then, a little um, shop. yeah and, and a little shop. someone's buying this stuff to stick on ebay at an inflated price thinking oh what a way to it's like get a good return on investment with some interest and of course in the end they're just going to end up in hard rubbish you know people are just going to throw them away years from now and uh it's just it's just i mean it's just a bit silly but uh, it's that mentality that people can sometimes have saying i'll get it not because i want it you know but also because oh i can resell it again in the future and uh that doesn't always work so there you go which i, yeah. which I think was different to when we were collecting remember how we collect stuff from mcdonald's or kfc or uh, Pizza Hut, when they had a release of something, like the Batman glasses, the Batman Forever glasses from McDonald's, we collected them because it was like, oh, my God, it's a something really different. Um, but, you know, I saw in this antique place the other day, I saw a bag of uh, Muppet Babies, which were a McDonald's uh, kids Happy Meal um, thing from the late 80s, I want to say, and they were going for next to nothing. They weren't complete, but almost if they had been complete i probably would have picked up the set if you're going to do a set of uh clickable muppets that have to have three of us they reckon that'd be kind of <laughs> groovy. Um, i love that comment by Susie that says don't get us started on cold minis yeah yeah i know i it's i mean you could just buy the full size yeah. item and just be done with that but no no get them tiny so there you go jeffro you're going to say something no nah. all right yeah Jeffrey, I mean, gonna... I've, I've seen some uh very popular sort of things coming out uh, all right, Jeff, I'm going to kick you off. 
see if Josh is on the internet and then come back. All right, beauty done. So uh, yeah, so yeah, I reckon yeah, some Muppet babies here. Yeah, we'd definitely be Muppeting. So uh, how good is that? Um, happy meals collected a few. Yeah. So look, we're going to wrap this conversation up in a particular. It was just a bit of a general chit chat. NPS, did you want to chuck in anything before we uh, move on to something else? Uh, just a couple of little things. Things like the, the original six million dollar man is one of the most. Uh, sought after and, and expensive toys uh now that's collectible so steve austin back in the late 70s if it's still in the box it's actually considered quite quite a rarity um and it was also mentioned in the 40 year old virgin steve carell's character had one of those mint in box and whoever had those collection or those collectibles in that show had such a, a delicacy in terms of they were mint in pristine mint condition not as in you know tattered edges and all that sort of stuff uh, and as for comic books, if we want to look at what's oh, what's yeah. um, collectible in comic books, it's hard because not all of the comics from the beginning, so like, you know, Detective 27 and Superman Action 1 and all that sort of stuff, only because the condition that they're in, if they're in lousy condition or they've been touched up or reprinted or whatever the case is, uh, you can tell. But if it's mint, and I think the last one was a... Superman action comics uh, first appearance of Superman and I think it only went for sixty four thousand uh, dollars at auction so not a lot really considering one a couple of years ago before that went for like 130 140 thousand so it depends on the condition which is um, tricky in comics um, I'm probably gonna finish this uh, discussion up by a comment from Greg I like what Greg said about he collected uh, breakfast cereal toys back in the day, oh, and the bits of plastic, but he absolutely loved them. And I guess this what tells us I'm going to bring Jeffro back, and hopefully he's working now. So um, it, what it tells you is that ultimately the value of an item is the value to the individual as to what they think of it, what they feel of it. And uh, I do find it funny that Michael Herbert used the magnifying glass to melt them. So <laughs> there you go. So, so, and then Greg could be saying that is awesome that Michael did that because there were less of them in the world that after Michael destroyed them, Greg's ones, the value went up. So uh, there you go. And of course, the ultimate of crazy collectibles that do appreciate and values for all the wrong reason are effectively autographs from celebrities. And it is a known fact that once a celebrity passes away, the value goes up, which is uh, not ideal at all. So there you go. Anyway, we're going to move on from this discussion. It's just been a little bit of a chin wag on a Wednesday night. We're just chilling out, kicking them out, talking about the collectible stuff, a very, very groovy. Uh, and uh, whether you keep your collectibles mitten, box or loose, whichever floats your boat, um, so long as they make you happy, that is the most important thing you can have. So uh, we're going to buzz off. We'll uh, see you all uh next wednesday someone's still writing about aladdin walt disney had it uh, yep oh, okay good on you phil good so phil's still joining us and with a bit of a good comment there so well done all right so we're gonna buzz off we'll see you next wednesday and don't forget to always stay nerdy okay take care guys Ta -da. <laughs>